The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 15, 1 through 10. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Come follow me. Discipleship Reflections on the Sunday Gospel for Liturgical Year C by Daniel H. Muggenberg 24 Sunday in Ordinary Time Our scripture passage for this Sunday comes from the Gospel of Luke 15, 1-10. This chapter is the heart and center of Luke's Gospel. In it we hear three parables of divine mercy and reconciliation. We also hear the reaction of those who disapprove of God's generous and merciful love. This reading challenges to embrace the values of God and cooperate the work of reconciliation the Lord is trying to effect in our lives and in the lives of others. The chapter begins with the Pharisees and scribes complaining because Jesus is welcoming sinners and eating with them. To share a meal in the ancient world was more than just a way to satisfy hunger. It was a way in which people shared their life and celebrated relationship among the participants. The English word companion communicates this meaning since it is derived from the two Latin words cum, with, and panis, bread, and refers to a person with whom we share bread. The objection of the Pharisees and scribes then was focused on the fact that Jesus was becoming friends with people who were regarded as sinners. This reaction of, of Jesus was scandalous and unacceptable to the Pharisees and scribes because they believed it was honorable to separate oneself from those who were considered less holy. Jesus teaches us that God desires reconciliation and the conversion of others. In fact, God not only values openness to a sinner's conversion, but also actually takes initiative in seeking that conversion. The Pharisees and scribes may have welcomed sinners to their table at some point, but only when those sinners had proven themselves worth of such an honor. Jesus teaches us that God honors those who search out to reconcile and welcome the wayward rather than waiting for them to first correct their lives before they receive love and attention. The attitude of the Pharisees and scribes can be divisive in a community because it creates a world in which some people see themselves as better than others and restrict their associations to those they consider like themselves. Of course, others who are deemed unworthy are excluded from such associations. Rather than facilitating or encouraging conversion, such a divisive and condemnatory attitude actually frustrates and impedes conversion. 
Jesus came to seek out and save what was lost, and he expects his disciples to assist him in that effort. This passage challenges us to examine our attitudes and judgments of others so as to take initiative in seeking their conversion rather than frustrating it. The fact that the tax collectors and sinners were drawing near to listen to Jesus indicates that they are receiving our Lord's word and becoming disciples with a corresponding change in life. Such a delicate moment of grace needs nurturing and acceptance, lest it perish from indifference and rejection. Reflection questions. As you think about the differences in attitude expressed by Jesus and the Pharisees, how are you challenged to reconsider your own attitude and values? When has someone's acceptance, encouragement, and friendship helped you change your life in a positive way? Who is waiting for you to take initiative and reach out to them? How does your faith community experience division because of the judgmental attitudes of some members? Who are the people who are considered sinners today. Jesus then tells the parable of the shepherd who leaves the 99 and goes after the lost sheep. This reaction would not have made sense to the people of Jesus' time for two reasons. First, it was a disproportionate risk to leave the 99 to fend for themselves without assurance that the lost one would even be found. The action of the shepherd in the parable teaches us that God does not follow human logic when making such decisions. The Lord is not content to play number games when it comes to seeking the conversion of sinners. God desires that every single person participate in the life of grace, and so God demonstrates a differential love and care for those who most need it. The ones who stray from the life of grace. Second, the action of the shepherd would have been perceived as unwarranted and undeserved because it was obviously the fault of the sheep that wandered away. Surely then, it was the responsibility of the sheep to find its way back. The Pharisees and scribes most likely thought the sheep deserved to die because of its actions. Jesus reveals that God values mercy over merit, even when it can be perceived as risky or unwarranted. We all know someone who is a lost sheep, and this parable challenges us to re-examine the excuses we use to exempt ourselves from reaching out to them. The Pharisees and the scribes believed that they deserved God's attention and Jesus' friendship because they merited it. Jesus reveals his desire to share his life with those who most need it instead. And sometimes that means those who wander from the Lord and the life of grace. Because Jesus is motivated by mercy rather than merit. Our Lord rejoices when his mercy is effective and reconciliation is achieved. Reflection questions. When do you find yourself budgeting your mercy based on the probability of success in your efforts? How can we as a faith community play a numbers game when it comes to our efforts to evangelize? That is how can we contend that 99 in such a way that we dismiss our obligation to go after the lost one. When do you find yourself thinking that people deserve alienation and suffering because of a wayward decision? 
What are the excuses you use to exempt yourself from reaching out to bring back a lost sheep? When have you been frustrated because you haven't received the attention you think you deserve for living a good and faithful life? The next parable is about a woman who lost a dakma. It is important to note that a dakma was a very little, a very little value, approximately 19 cents in contemporary valuation. The parable focuses on her enormous reaction to the lost coin. She lights a lamp, sweeps the house, and carefully searches. No one would do that for 19 cents. Whether or not others valued the coin as worthy of such a search, the point is that she did. Some scripture scholars think that lost coin may have been part of the woman's dowry as evidence that it was one of a set of 10 such coins. If this interpretation is correct, then the woman would be searching for the lost coin with diligence because it represented a lost relationship. It does take enormous effort sometimes to help reconcile someone who has lost or strained his or her relationship with God. It can be especially difficult when the person is perceived as unworthy of such effort. This parable teaches us that God highly values every human person, no matter what others think of them. It is because of the precious worth of each human being that God will expend great effort in seeing reconciliation when there has been estrangement. This is an important lesson for us as disciples because we are called to be co-workers with the Lord's express that some dictated effort in finding the lost and reconciling them to God. Reflection questions. Who has expended enormous energy in order to help you in your relationship with God? Who today is considered unworthy of the effort it would take to reconcile them to God and the community? This parable teaches us that God values every human person, no matter how society values them. Who does our society consider of less value? How can you help defend the inherent value of every human being. These parables invite us to consider what the church would like without God's gracious mercy that seeks after us when we stray and searches for us relentlessly. St. Paul tells us of his personal encounter with God's gracious love in Timothy 1, 12 through 17. The experience of St. Paul has been repeated in the lives of great men and women of faith throughout the ages who by, their no, by no merit of their own were reconciled to God by God's committed and generous mercy. Such great figures include Augustine of Hippo, Francis of Assisi, Ignatius of Loyola, and Dorothy Day. How would Christianity be different if our relationship with God was based on our merit rather than the Lord's mercy? History tells us that St. Catherine of Siena, in an act of mercy, stood next to Nicola de Tolta during his execution. And when he was beheaded, she received his head and prayed for his soul. And also St. Teresa Lisieux prayed for the conversion of the criminal Henry Panzini, who had refused to go to confession, but before his execution he asked to kiss the crucifix three times for each one of his victims. Reflection Questions What would the church be like without the possibility 
that great sinners can become great saints. Who do you think is the person who least deserves God's merciful love in our world today? Can you sincerely pray for that person, hoping that the Lord will transform their life? And can you honestly look forward to the day when you can be their companion?